Welcome to the Osceola United Methodist Church. Please remember in prayer our neighbors in need of visits and calls. Please pray for our community to be welcoming of all. Pray for peace in the world and in our hearts. And please pray for United Faith Parish, Afton, Arisby, Jerusalem, and Lorimer. Our silent auction will be held from October 20th to October 30th. 10 a.m. is the cutoff date on October 30th. We are going to be holding a special homecoming service on October 30th at 1015. There's only one service that day. We ask that everyone joins us and afterwards we will have a live pie, cake, and cheesecake auction. Please don't forget to bring your silent auction items into the church. We are looking for pies, tarts, cheesecakes, and cakes for our live auction on the 30th. Contact the office to sign up if you are interested in donating one of those. Our youth group meets the second and fourth Sundays at 4 o'clock, and our confirmation group meets the second and fourth Sundays at 5 o'clock in Osceola. We will be having a harvest luncheon on Tuesday, October 25th from 11 to 1. We will be serving ham balls, mac and cheese, corn, pumpkin bars. It's dine-in, carry-out, or delivery. Kindly RSVP by calling the church. The Downtown Spooktacular is going to replace Trunk or Treat this year. Uh, we will be downtown on Friday, October 28th from 5.30 to 7 p.m. We ask if you're going to donate candy to please bring it into the office. We will be hosting our first winter coat drive and giveaway. The donation deadline to drop off your new or gently used clean hats, gloves, coats, or boots will be October 28th at 12 o'clock. And then we will host our giveaway on Saturday, October 29th from 8 to 12. The goal is to collect and distribute new or unwanted coats, hats, gloves for all area children and adults so that everyone stays healthy and warm this winter. There will be a community Christmas concert on Sunday, December 4th at 4 o'clock at the Osceola United Methodist Church. Rehearsals will be Sunday from 3 to 4.15 at the Osceola United Methodist Church. For more information, email Ann Murr. His Kids will be held at, as an after-school program at Clark Elementary every Wednesday at 3.10. It starts on October 5th. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to try again. Sometimes we fail at things. This is going to be important in what we talk about today, but I just utterly failed by accidentally dropping something and clicking the button on the camera. Isn't it funny how that works? How one little thing that we do can totally change um, everything that we've already done. And it can, we can't just always go back and fix things the way we wish we could. Sometimes when they happen, they happen. And, and this, is, this is what our focus today is going to be. It's going to be a little bit on justice. We can't always go back. We can't always change what's happened. And, and as we look at these, these lessons, especially the one from Luke, we're going to see that, that message come out. But here first, I want to start in Timothy. We're going to start in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. I hope to come to you quickly, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I'm delayed, you'll know how you should behave in God's household. Isn't that fabulous? This is, this is the first example we have of um, Paul saying, I can't meet with you face to face. Face to face is not an option. I don't know um, 
COVID wasn't a thing then, but I'm sort of hearing that same message I hear a lot now. I can't meet with you face to face, but maybe we can text over this. Maybe we can Zoom about this. I want you to, to hear what I have to say, even though I can't be there, because I want you to know how to behave in the church. And then he gives this beautiful, beautiful line. Sometimes when people tell us how, how we're supposed to behave, we get a little worried about that because what, what we think they're going to say is you have to be good. You're, you're misbehaving. You're doing everything wrong. Things are terrible. This is what Paul says about how we need to behave in the church. It is the church of the living God. Folks, that is good news right there. The backbone and support of the truth. Paul is not scolding them for their behavior. Paul is saying to them, I don't think you understand how important you are. And I want you to know that you are the, you are the church of the living God. God is alive because God is alive in each of you. And that is the church. God is giving you this group of people, this place to worship sometimes, but mostly this group of people, as a backbone of the truth. There's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. But oh my gosh, the relief that they must have felt when Paul said, first of all, I'm going to tell you how to behave in the church. And then you guys, you guys are amazing because God is alive in you. And that's who you are. And then Paul says, without question, the mystery of godliness is great. He was revealed as a human, declared righteous by the Spirit, seen by angels, preached throughout the nations, believed in around the world, and taken up in glory. You are the backbone of the truth, and here is the truth. It is the life, the death, the resurrection, the ascension of Christ. And that is alive in you. You know, no pressure, guys. <laughs> but this is who we are as the church. And isn't that beautiful? So many times we hear this dis absolutely depressing thoughts of, of how we are totally bad and totally wrong. And the Methodist church is all screwed up and messed up and everything's bad. And the, the Christian church is, is struggling after COVID and everything is bad. And the church made this bad decision, and this church made this bad decision, and these people made this bad decision, and, and the church is just full of awfulness, and, and we hear some depressing things about the church. But what Paul is saying, the people are on edge. Paul's saying, "Let I need to tell you this, because I want you to know how to behave when I'm not there. And we all know when our parents told us that way back in the day, that meant Oof. we were going to hear about all the things that we were doing wrong and that we can't do while they're gone, right? But instead, Paul tells the church everything the church is doing right. That is the thing that Paul wants the church to know when he's gone. I want you to know you are. You are. The church of the living God, the backbone of the truth, and the truth is all things that have transpired in Jesus Christ. Powerful. What a wonderful message for us to hear right now. Because I'm telling you, we hear plenty of the scolding, plenty of the finger pointing, plenty of the my church is better than your church kind of chatter. But what we need to hear every day of the week is that we are the church of the living God and that Christ is alive in us. And because of that, 
We are the backbone of truth in the world. And we have an important job to make sure that people understand what that is. And and let's look at this passage in Luke, because that will show us what this, this truth we're talking about is. So in Luke chapter, so Luke chapter 18 says that Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and to not be discouraged. I don't know about you, but this has been a discouraging time. I've heard so many discouraging things about our denomination, about the church in general, about how things aren't bouncing back the way people thought they would after COVID, about attendance, about um, things in the community and the world that just aren't right. And it's so easy to be discouraged, but listen to what Jesus says. He's telling them a parable so that they're not going to be discouraged. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him, asking him, give me justice against my adversary. And for a while he refused. But finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, I will give this widow justice because she keeps bothering me. Otherwise, there will be no end to her coming here and embarrassing me. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Won't God provide justice to his chosen people who cry out day and night? Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will give them justice quickly. But when the human one comes, will he find faithfulness on earth? So what Jesus is telling us in, in Luke chapter 18, remember that, that this is getting close to the time of crucifixion. And Jesus is, is preparing people for this time when he won't be with them. Just like Paul in the beginning of this reading from Timothy is no coincidence that these are paired together in the lectionary. Um, Paul says, you know, I want you to know what to do so that when I'm not there, you're not going to get discouraged. You're going to know what to do. And likewise, that's what Jesus is saying in the scripture passage. He's preparing people for, for a time when he's not going to be there anymore. And he's telling them, pray continually, talk to God continually, and don't get discouraged if you don't immediately hear the answer you want to hear. I'm still with you, even when I'm not with you. Because as long as you are being the church, the church of the living God, I am alive in you. And so you, you don't need to be discouraged. You just need to persist, persist in what is right. And so this widow, and no coincidence that Jesus used a widow, right? In, in Jesus' day, a widow would have been the last person anyone listened to, and especially a judge. So judges are way up here on the food chain in this time and widows are way down here those in our congregation who are judges now would be like yeah we're not quite all the way up there in the food chain <laughs> but um but in this day judges have the ultimate say on things and once they rule we're done and and the widow a widow is at the bottom of the heap when it comes to social order Nobody, nobody hears the cry of the widow. Nobody hears the cry of the least in society. And they cry out for justice, but because other people have more power, more influence, um, more of a voice, no one hears them. We see that in our society still today. We see some people being listened to and other people being completely and utterly disregarded. Now, whether that is um, because of gender, because of um, biases, because of race, because of um, sexual orientation right now is, is a big deal. 
whatever it is that is keeping people from listening to someone else, it happens a lot. We have all been there. I think most of us anyway, have been that person that no one is listening to right now. I, why don't they just listen? Why don't they just hear? This widow's crying out. We're the church. We are the church of the living God. When, when people cry out for justice, we've got to listen. Jesus says, be persistent. Because if you are persistent, and the thing you are crying out for is real justice. You will be heard. So frame that in, in First Timothy. In this image of the church as the backbone of truth in our world. And let's think carefully about this. Are we listening to the voices that no one will hear? Back in the day, I was a social worker and worked with kids with behavior issues. I loved my job. I still love my job. It's just a little bit different now, but, but I loved the puzzle and the intriguing um, love that that is just waiting in these kids because so much of our behavior as human beings is based on needing to be heard and the most important job we can do is to listen so the way to help kids with their behavior was to listen to them and find out really truly what justice they're crying out for. And likewise, the same thing goes for our world. As the church, we need to be the backbone of truth. We need to listen to those voices that are crying out for justice and hear the truth that is in them. Because we are the church of the living God. Christ is alive in us. And because of that, justice should be our goal every day. So what does that look like? Well, when we kind of backtrack to 1 Timothy, it tells us what this truth and what this justice is. It is, it is Christ. It is everything that Christ stood for. Is our justice that we hear, is the thing that we respond to in the world. When people are crying out because no one will listen, we need to listen. Holding on to the truth of the gospel, holding on to, to this story means that we must listen above all else. Unjust judges don't listen, but churches of a living God, that is our biggest job to listen to the world and to hear those cries and to not say, we are so far up here that we're not gonna listen to you anymore. But rather to be the church that walks side by side with even the widow, even the orphan, even the Democrat, even the Republican, even the person who, who chooses to love differently than us, even the person who, who chooses to, um, to live a life that is theirs and not ours, whatever that looks like. in our lives we make choices 
We do things, we decide what we think is right and what we think is wrong. And we want to stick by those. And we want to hold on to those. But in our text, we can't ignore today that Jesus calls us to our most important mission. And that is to listen to the cry of those who are unheard. And to bring justice to their case, whatever that looks like. Be the backbone of truth. Be the church of the living God. And what a joy that even, even when Paul is not sitting here with us, when, um, Jesus is with us in spirit, of course, but not physically present with us the way that Jesus once was present with his people physically. We've not been abandoned, though, because the church, the church is still the church of the living God. Listen for justice. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Have a great week.